first became a technician, did your instructor teach you electrical theory by comparing it to water flowing through a hose? Yeah, me too. Well, guess what? You learned it wrong. Hi, I'm Pete Meyer, and this is Cardone ProTech. The Cardone ProTech series is produced in partnership with MotorAge, America's oldest trade publication for the automotive professional. Replacing any electrical component, especially an expensive one like this ECU, should never be done on a guess. It should be the result of a professional diagnosis. And in order to do that, you have to have a strong foundation in electrical fundamentals. So over the course of the next few Cardone ProTech videos, I'm gonna dispel a few myths for you, help you shore up your electrical foundation, and share some testing techniques that will help ensure that when you decide to replace that ECU, it's going to correct the problem. Now let's start with a discussion of the relationships between voltage, resistance, and current flow, starting with voltage. Many of us were taught that voltage could be thought of as the pressure or push that moves electrons through a circuit similar to water flowing from a garden hose. Not true. What actually makes the water flow from the hose is the difference in pressure behind the water in the hose and the atmospheric pressure on the outside of the hose. Think of the pumping station providing hundreds of PSI to force water through the various lines to get to my hose. Do you think if the pressure on the outside were higher than what was behind the water in the hose that water would flow? Of course not. And if we could measure the difference between the water pressure behind and the atmospheric pressure outside, that would be the differential pressure that's making everything happen. The concept of voltage is very similar, and the best way to start thinking about it is to consider the automotive battery. Because of the chemical reaction taking place in the battery, there is an abundance of free electrons on the negative side of the battery and a shortage on the positive side. This creates a high pressure area on the negative side and a low pressure area, if you will, on the positive side. And all the free electrons over on the negative side desperately want to get over to those on the positive side or to fill that void. High pressure always wants to try to get to low. Now, if we were to put a wire across the two terminals, which some of us may just have tried before, you'd see that when they have a path between the two sides, they'll do so, and they'll do so pretty darn quick. In fact, they'll do it at the speed of light. When we want to measure the voltage in the battery, we're going to connect our positive meter lead to the positive side of the battery and our negative meter lead over to the negative side of the battery. Then the reading that we get on our meter is a measurement of the voltage in the battery or the voltage potential. But I want you to remember this. We're reading the difference between all the free electrons here, the potential on the negative side, and the almost nothing potential on the positive side. It's that difference that you're seeing displayed on your meter. Now here's something that I really want you to remember. When you're measuring voltage with your voltmeter, you're not measuring a static number. You're measuring a difference in potential. In this case, between the negative side of the battery and the positive side of the battery. Remember, we have a lot of free electrons on the negative side and next to nothing on the positive side. So that difference, that pressure difference, is what gets the electrons moving. That's an important concept to remember. The meter is always going to measure the voltage potential, the difference between its meter leads, no matter where they're placed in the circuit. My instructor would kink the garden hose and stop the water supply from exiting the hose. That's one way to understand resistance, but it doesn't paint the entire picture. Sure, water can't flow when the hose is blocked off, and resistance is anything that prevents the free flow of electrons as they travel from the high side of the battery and back to the low side. But do you think there's any resistance to flow in the water hose when it's wide open? Careful, think about that for a minute. Even with the hose open, the water is still facing some resistance from the friction between the water and the inside of the hose. The same can be said for an electrical circuit. 
Everything in the circuit offers some resistance to electron flow, but the primary source of resistance is the device that we're asking to do the work. After all, it wouldn't be an electrical circuit if we didn't want it to do something. Now in this case, it's a light bulb, but it could be a fuel pump, a door motor, an ECM. All of these are devices that we want to operate in our circuit. And the load should be the biggest, baddest source of resistance in that circuit. Let's go back to our water comparison again and consider a water sprinkler. That's the load in the water circuit. It offers resistance and it does work, powered by the flow of the water. Do you think that if I were able to change the pressure differential in that water hose that I could spin that sprinkler a lot faster? You bet I could. And the same is true when it comes to an electrical circuit. The load, the primary source of resistance, is relatively stable. So if I have an increase in pressure differential in the battery or system voltage increases for some reason, like when the engine's running and the alternator's charging, I'm also going to increase the amount of electrons flowing through the load. Now here's something else I really want to drive home here. Everything in the circuit has resistance. But that load, that component doing the work, that's the primary source of resistance. I want you to keep that in mind today and join us on the next Cardone ProTech video where we're going to explore that in particular in more detail. But for right now, let's move on to flow. Of the three concepts of voltage, resistance, and current flow, current flow seems to be the easiest for most technicians to grab a hold of. And why not? It kind of makes sense. We're used to looking at a circuit diagram as having a power or positive side, a negative or ground side. And we can imagine the electrons flowing through the circuit to the load and back again. That's how we envision it in our minds. But that's a concept I want you to get rid of because when the circuit is complete, that flow of electrons happens instantaneously. Remember, at the speed of light. So it's, you can't think of the electrons going through one at a time like this through the circuit path. More precisely, what's happening is that everything in the circuit is made of a conductive material. That means it's easy to knock an electron loose. Well, remember these guys over here, there's a shortage. They want them. So every atom next to that battery, they're stealing an electron from. Well, of course, that atom's not happy, so it's stealing one from his buddy. In the meantime, the battery's stealing that one back. He's stealing one from the buddy, that one's stealing one back. And it's all the way down the line, all the way back to where we have all of the free electrons available for us to pass along through the circuit. Imagine an old-fashioned fire brigade, a line of people all holding a bucket full of water to start. The last guy in line pours his out on the fire, the load, and then grabs the next from his neighbor while passing the empty to one with no water in his bucket to be passed back eventually to the guy filling the buckets, the battery. On both sides, the lead guy's neighbors are filling their hands with the bucket from the person next to them, going all the way back to the guy taking the empties and passing out the full ones. I hope that gives you a better understanding of what voltage, resistance, and current flow really are. It's important to be comfortable with these concepts and how they interrelate and interact with one another to affect how a circuit performs. Those relationships are going to be the topic of our next ProTech video. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you hit that notification bell so you'll know when it's ready for you to watch. Now, if you have any questions, I'm going to leave an email in the video description. Feel free to send me any questions that you have related to this or any other automotive repair topic, I'll be glad to do whatever I can to help. And as I always say, thanks for watching.